the Diocese of Brooklyn, pilgrims proudly walking through the streets of Lisbon, their faith on full display for World Youth Day. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti. One encounter with the Pope was all it took. Now the pilgrims of the Diocese of Brooklyn are energized and ready to evangelize. But this global event isn't about just seeing the Pope, it's also about getting closer to Christ. And as Current News' Jessica Easthope tells us, that is what the Brooklyn pilgrims have been doing all along. Right, Jess? That's right, Christine. As much of a thrill as it was to see the Holy Father in person, the real spirit of World Youth Day is about a much more quiet encounter that happens in the hearts of pilgrims. And for many of them, that switch flips during confession. They call them Rise Up Sessions, catechism designed to remind pilgrims why they're at World Youth Day. On Friday, travelers from the Diocese of Brooklyn got a chance to go to confession during their last Rise Up session for the week. Romeo Petrick, a chaperone from St. Patrick's Church, said the sacrament has been the highlight for him during his past six World Youth Days. I know that when I've gone to confession, it's one of those things that got tears rolling down my eyes and just let everything go. But even more rewarding than confessing his sins is seeing young people confess theirs. Like a cloud being lifted away from them and it just kind of like perked up a little bit. Teens like Shannon Keenan took advantage of the opportunity. Afterwards, I definitely felt lighter and I'm happy that I can like continue the rest of this pilgrimage with a more clear head and like better focus. Shannon said her World Youth Day experience has put her in touch with the faith she holds in her heart as well as the one she gets to express on the outside. And I've got to hear so many cool speakers speaking on Things like ecology and the connection that has to religion. And yesterday we were talking about friendships and social media. I just didn't expect it to be so educational. Pilgrims Friday were still coming off of Thursday's welcoming ceremony where Pope Francis delivered a speech. Once he entered the park, the place was just um, explosive. It was great. Brooklyn's Bishop Robert Brennan was in the crowd watching pilgrims react to what he says was a powerful message. He used language like God loves you as you are because the experience of World Youth Day helps people to see, wow, we're not the only ones who believe this. There are a lot of people and a lot of people who believe it with the same energy. World Youth Day continues over the weekend. Tomorrow morning, the pilgrims will head out on a six and a half mile walk to where hundreds of thousands of them will sleep under the stars together before mass Sunday morning. Young people from the Diocese of Brooklyn will head home on Monday and we'll have a special wrap up of the entire trip. So make sure you join us for that. Jessica Easthope, Currents News. Christine. Thanks, Jess. Looking forward to it. Pope Francis also heard some pilgrims' confessions earlier today. The Holy Father donned a purple stole as he sat across from three young people from Spain, Guatemala, and Italy. The three confessions lasted for about 10 minutes altogether. That confessional the Holy Father sat in was actually one of dozens built by inmates from three Portugal prisons. The 150 plywood structures were part of an initiative meant to help prisoners learn professional skills and reintegrate into society. They were all set up in what's being called Reconciliation Park, where the sacrament was offered to pilgrims in different languages. Those pilgrims weren't the only ones to get a personal interaction with the Pope. The Holy Father actually stopped his entourage on the way into a meeting with charitable organizations so he could high-five a child in a wheelchair. During his travels, the Holy Father also blessed some babies while in his Pope mobile and in his wheelchair. Traveling side by side with Pope Francis, our senior correspondent for Crocs and your World Youth Day expert, Elise Allen. Hi, Elise. It's winding down, but it hasn't stopped yet. How are you doing? Hi, Christine. Doing well. Things are certainly pumped up still, and you can hear it just outside of these walls. Absolutely. At that media center, so many people there. So not many news organizations, though, are reporting this, but this pilgrimage is also a peace mission for the Pope. You just left a news conference with interreligious leaders where one person commented on the pontiff's mission for peace in Ukraine. What can you tell us about that? Well, Pope Francis, generally, whenever he travels somewhere, he tries to meet interreligious leaders. And this morning, he did that ahead of his formal morning events. Um, he met with a group of interreligious and ecumenical leaders at the Vatican's Nunciature. And one of them was a Russian Orthodox bishop, um, who I believe is based in Paris. He said his, his eparchy and the people there feel just very terrible about the Ukraine war and everything that's happened. And 
and he thanks the Pope for um, everything that he has done on behalf of Ukraine. Pope Francis was very emotional when the bishop mentioned that. This was just a very special moment. As you know, Pope Francis is no stranger to speaking off the cuff. But during one of his speeches, he actually went off script for a reason. Let's listen. Son muchas las cosas que quisiera decirle ahora, pero sucede que no me están funcionando los reflectores <risa> y no puedo leer bien. Y así que se los voy a dar para que lo hagan público esto después. ¿eh? Y no, no forzar la vista y leer mal, eso no se puede hacer. ¿eh? The Pope obviously joking there, showing this isn't a serious thing. So we shouldn't be concerned, right, Elise? Um, I would say not. You know, we were talking about an octogenarian. Pope Francis is 86 years old, um, and he did have cataract surgery last year. Um, so he has had trouble with his eyesight, and that's no secret. Um, and, you know, I was not in the church where he was giving his speech this morning. I was on the outside. But looking at the photos, the lighting in there was quite dim. So it's not surprising that the Pope um, had trouble seeing there. All right, Elise Allen, senior correspondent for Crocs. Thanks so much for giving us the inside scoop all week. We'll touch base with you again on Monday when you're back in Rome. Thank you. Elise will be following the Holy Father all weekend as he leads the big events of World Youth Day. So be sure to follow along with Currents News and the tablet online where you can read her latest reports on this pilgrimage to Portugal. And Pope Francis has a busy weekend ahead. On Saturday, the Holy Father will head to Fatima where he'll pray the rosary with sick young people at the shrine to Our Lady of Fatima. On Sunday, it's the grand finale of this global event, the concluding mass of World Youth Day. It'll be celebrated in Tejo Park, a massive green space developed in Lisbon specifically for World Youth Day. More than one million people are expected to be there. And that is this Currents News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. We leave you with the amazing images of the Diocese of Brooklyn Pilgrims as they took part in World Youth Day events all this week. Hope to see you again next time. Levantemos os braços, a pressa no ar. Jesus vive e não nos deixa sós, não mais deixarei.